Welcome to Candid Conversation number 219. Today we're going to talk about drugs, but not just any drugs, prescription drugs. It seems like there are probably, and I don't know the statistics, but there are probably more prescriptions being taken in America than there are people. It seems like everybody has a prescription and a lot of people have multiple prescriptions. When I go to the doctor and I fill out something and I put under prescriptions, I put, or medications, I put none. They always question, you're not taking anything? You don't take anything? Because everybody takes something. That's what doctors do. You go to the doctor, you say, this is what ails me. And they say, here's the prescription drug. Next. All right, here's a prescription for you. Next. And that's what they do. They just pass out these prescriptions willy-nilly. And the problem with this is what they are is that, you know, when I was growing up, when people talked about drugs, it was always the legal kind. And maybe it's just the environment I grew up in. Maybe people did take prescriptions. I'm sure there were, but it certainly wasn't like it is today. But when I heard about drugs, I was, uh, you know, I would think of marijuana or some illegal drug, cocaine. That's what I would always think of when someone talked about drugs. And it was always seen as a bad thing. People took it to alter their state. They took it to they feel a high, feel good about themselves. That's what drugs were all about. And that was condemned by the church I went to. A lot of Christians, a lot of churches were against taking drugs. Even prescription drugs, some of them were against that. Uh, but, but especially the illegal ones. But now, the culture has changed. And pretty much everybody takes a prescription. It may not be to get a high, but it's to feel good. Maybe not in the sense of an illegal drug where I say, oh, I'm taking a drug so I can, you know, get out of my bad feeling. But it's, it's really because I have pain, I take this drug so that I don't have the pain anymore. And I'm not saying that's wrong, but as Christians, we're called to a higher standard. All right, the issue isn't we need to stay away from sin. Galatians 2.19 says, I, through the law, am dead to the law that I might live unto Christ. God isn't concerned with me sinning or not because it's under the blood. He's concerned about getting sound doctrine in the inward man and having Christ live in me. And so it's not the Christian's goal should not be to avoid sin. The Christian's goal should be, I'm an ambassador of Christ. God wants all people to be saved and to come into the knowledge of the truth. How does my decision work toward people being saved and coming into the knowledge of the truth? That's the question. That's that people should ask. Christians should ask. So when you take a prescription drug, what you're doing, for the most part, is you're trying to alleviate some pain that you have. Back pain. For me, I got a prescription for Nexium from my doctor. I don't like taking it, but I have all this gas build up. So let's get rid of the gas. So I'm, I'm, I've been taking it, you know, sporadically, and I think I've got, I'm supposed to take one a day, one bottle's supposed to last me a month, it's been two months and I still haven't taken the first bottle yet, I've just taken occasional pills. But even that, I think, is this something that I should be doing as ambassador of Christ? And no one likes to suffer, no man yet ever hated his own flesh, you don't want to suffer, but Paul says in 1 Corinthians, I'm sorry, 2 Corinthians 12, 
he says he had a thorn in the flesh, a messenger of Satan to buffet him. So he had some kind of problem in the flesh. And he asked for God to take it away from him. And God says, my grace is sufficient. My strength is made perfect in weakness. Most gladly, therefore, will I glory in my infirmities that the power of Christ may rest upon me. Notice he didn't go running to a doctor. And you may say, oh, well, they didn't have advanced doctors back then. How do you know? The woman with the issue of blood who came to Jesus, it says she had been going to the physicians for years and they hadn't been able to help her. Isn't that the case here in America? There are people who go to doctors for years for some condition and the doctors are not able to help them. Now they have prescriptions for pretty much everything, but does it really help them? I'm reading a book called Overdose that was written in 2001 by a doctor. And he mentions in the book how these prescription drugs have too much uh, side effects. Prozac was the most popular drug, I believe, in the 1990s. And yet, there were just all kinds of bad side effects to that. A lot of that was due to overdosing. If they had a lower dose, they wouldn't have had those side effects. But nevertheless, they had these side effects. If Pro Prozac, my understanding is for depression. A hundred years ago, if Prozac was came out a hundred years ago, very few people would have taken it. The book says that 24 million prescriptions for Prozac were written in 1998. The church I grew up in and the culture a hundred years ago was that any mental problem is solved by God. If you have depression, you don't take a pill for a depression. Psychology was really seen as a bad thing. It wasn't until Freud got into the church and it was accepted before, uh, before psychology ever was accepted, but before that it was seen as a very bad thing. Most Christians would not go to a psychologist. They would not take drugs for mental illnesses because God can heal your mental illness. You, you have a depression problem, you go read Ephesians 1. You find out you're blessed with all spiritual blessings in heavenly places, that you're forgiven according to the riches of His grace, and all the great things that are mentioned in Ephesians 1. Depression's gone. You don't feel sorry about yourself anymore. But now, with all these drugs, everything is a mental condition or a problem. Everything is just a chemical imbalance. When you see criminals, murders, it's all chemical. The defense gives the argument chemical imbalance. Oh yeah, they did the murder, but we shouldn't lock them up. They need psychotic help. Because no rational thinking person would ever murder somebody, so they must not be rationally thinking, they must have a mental problem, and it's not their issue, it's just some sickness, a disease, so let's give them a pill to take care of them. So now, people go to church, no problem taking Prozac or taking pills for mental illnesses. So here's Paul in 2 Corinthians 12, he says he has a thorn in the flesh. He doesn't ask. He doesn't go to the physicians. He goes to God. And God says, I'm not going to take it away. My grace is sufficient for thee, for my strength is made perfect in weakness. And Paul learns. He says, most gladly, therefore, will I glory in my infirmities, that the power of Christ may rest upon me. He says over in Romans 5, he says that we glory in tribulations, knowing the trial of our faith, work of patience, patience, experience, experience, hope. Hope maketh not a shame, because the love of God is shed abroad in our hearts by the Holy Ghost, which is given unto us. You have the love of God coming through you, and it all starts with tribulations. Now, I'm not saying a backache is a tribulation. I'm not saying don't go to the chiropractor or don't take medication. But I'm just saying, it's something to think about. The whole thinking of America when it comes to drugs has completely changed over the last hundred years. When I was growing up, 
if you had a marijuana leaf, you could go to jail for that. Now, when I was in Oregon a couple months ago on vacation, marijuana is legal there, recreational marijuana. I went into one of those stores just to check it out, see what it's all about. And it's treated like a, a like a, uh, like a pharmacy, basically. They have people behind the, behind the counter. I forget what they call them, but they're the ones who give out the, the marijuana that people want. They have them in glass cases. They have them in jars. You can't touch them, you know, until you buy them. Uh, they have somebody there who is an expert in all the different uses and types and strengths and all this stuff that they can recommend something just like you would go to a pharmacy Walmart pharmacy and ask the pharmacist you know, I've got a cold what should I take and the pharmacist will say well I recommend this cough medicine somebody goes to the marijuana dispensary I have this kind of pain what do you recommend or I just want to feel good what do you recommend and that person has all these different types that they can recommend for them to have something like that didn't exist when I was a kid you go to jail for even having a leaf and here's a whole store devoted to it out in the open everybody knows about it people walking in and out getting the marijuana so how long will it be before other, all drugs are legalized that we take heroin and we take methamphetamines and we take uh, all these other illegal drugs we put them in the hands of a doctor and they get prescriptions we can already do that with some of those drugs you can get a prescription for some illegal drugs if it's you know medically warranted uh, and the drugs that the doctors prescribe right now are very powerful you could have some real bad side effects Know, very strong type of stuff I had sinus surgery 15 years ago and they gave me some pain medication to take I took one pill and man I was just going out of my mind now, I didn't touch it again and that's crazy I'm not taking this I just deal with the pain so what does Paul do in 2nd Corinthians 12 he says well, I don't want the pain, because no man yet ever hated his own flesh. I want the thorn in the flesh to be taken away. But God knows better than I do. I'm not going to go to a doctor. I'm going to ask God. And when God says, I'm not going to take away that physical ailment you have, because this is going to increase your spiritual walk with me, because you're going to rely on the spiritual rather than the flesh, then Paul says, well, I'm glad I got this thorn in the flesh because it's going to help me spiritually. In the drug culture that we are in in America, no one, pretty much no one, would make that determination. And also, even if you did, here's the problem is it changes our way of thinking. So before, a marijuana leaf drug was bad or Prozac or some mental drug like that was bad because God can cure your depression. So then, now though, it's not. At first it was, well, we can take prescriptions for our physical ailments. Should we be doing that? I mean, I'm questioning that with this Nexium that I have. I just take it every once in a while. Should I really be taking it at all? You have these physical ailments. No one wants to have pain. I mean, you don't say, well, I'm gonna poke myself with a knife and have all these wounds so that I can feel pain so that the power of Christ can rest upon me. So if there's a drug available to get rid of your pain, wouldn't you take it? If there's no side effects, well, probably. But I'm just questioning it, just throwing this out there. If we are dead to the law that I might live unto Christ, and our primary goal is having Christ live in us, so that people may be saved and come into the knowledge of the truth, including myself, and my own benefit, spiritually speaking. And God says, my body is fearfully and wonderfully made, that it has an immune system, 
that it can it can survive there are people who have survived years ago before these drugs came out and still today some things they don't have answers for there would be people who lived in pain for 40 50 years maybe constant pain and there was nothing that could be done for them they didn't have any uh, solution for that the woman with the issue of blood had years of problems the guy who was at the pool of Bethesda in the book of John 38 years he wouldn't, wasn't able to walk there are people who have major physical ailments that man cannot cure and they still stick around I realize some things will kill you but a lot of the things in your bio and your body don't kill you they just make your life miserable uh, certain degrees of misery but uh, mis misery nonetheless and that's because God makes the body in such a way you're fearfully and wonderfully made not to have a body that will in this vile flesh that will never experience pain and never have problems but if God's goal is actually for you to grow in grace have a spiritual maturity spiritual growth wouldn't some kind of infirmity be good Romans 8 says we know not what to pray for as we ought but the Spirit intercedeth for us the Spirit helpeth our infirmities does that mean that he increases our infirmities makes our physical suffering more if he helps them if I have um, I don't know if I'm not able to solve a math problem and you help me with the math problem aren't you helping me solve the problem well, if, a, if you're helping my infirmity, aren't you helping my infirmity to grow? Hey, maybe not. Maybe that's not what it means. But in light of 2 Corinthians 12, it makes sense that Paul says, I got this thorn in the flesh, a messenger of Satan to buffet me. Don't you, God, don't you love me? Don't you want to take away this thorn in the flesh? And God says... You are going to grow spiritually. Christ is going to be strong in you if I leave that infirmity there. And Paul says, well, then I, I uh, glory in my infirmity because the power of Christ rests upon me. The problem with these drugs, these prescription drugs, is that it takes the focus off of that process. Hey, maybe it is great that you have, you know, like I have real bad allergies. It's great that I could take a Benadryl and not sneeze my head off and not blow my nose. I can get my work done that I need to do to support my family uh, by taking the Benadryl so it'll get me through the day. That's, you know, a good thing. Or is it a good thing? Would it be better that I suffer and recognize the spiritual implications of it? You know, that the spirit is what's important and not the flesh? The whole mentality today is when I've got something wrong with me, I go to the doctor, I get a prescription, and it takes care of it. A cold, for example. When I was growing up, you had the cold, you had a flu. We never went to a doctor. We never got a prescription. I'm not even sure a doctor would prescribe something for me back then. I don't think they would. Nowadays, though, somebody gets a cold, oh, let me go get the urgent care, get a Z pack. Someone gets the flu, oh, I gotta go to the emergency room. And it's the immediate answer is drugs. Because we've got a pill that covers everything. Or we've got pills that will take care of whatever it is. Doctor, oh, this pill will take care of it. And you take the pill and you're fine. Is that something that we should be doing? Or is it, because if that's what our focus is, and even though it takes away, like I say, the Benadryl, well, that's great, now I can do my job. I'm not sneezing my head off. I don't lose my job because I'm doing my job and I'm doing it well, and I'm not a distraction and I'm uh, to others. So yeah, that's good that I've got that. But where's my attitude? 
If my attitude is whenever I'm sick, I go take a pill. And God told Paul, you're sick, that will get you to trust in me. And then I will be strong through you. If my answer is I go run, take a pill, doesn't that eliminate God's ability to use the sickness to be strong through me? Don't I stop trusting in the spiritual? And don't I start trusting in the flesh in this case? Yeah, I'm not telling you what you should or should not do. I'm just throwing this out there as someone who is an ambassador for Christ. We're not under the law, we're under grace. God isn't concerned with your sin. But if Paul says, I'm not healing your illness, that the power of Christ may rest upon you. If God makes the body such that we have an immune system to keep living, but yet we don't uh, get well, we have pain, we all have infirmities that we deal with, Is prescription drugs a bad thing? I would say overall, at least to the way, the level that we're in in society, it is. Because no one's trusting in God anymore. The only time is there's that deathbed repentance. When the doctors say, there's nothing I can do for you, then all of a sudden you're going to die in the next three to six months. Then all of a sudden people get religion and they're saved. What if we didn't have doctors? What if we couldn't take pills? What if we were always in a bad condition? Would it be a bad thing? I learned right division as a teenager. The way I learned it was my uncle was an unbeliever. My grandfather had a stroke. And as a result of that stroke, my uncle believed the gospel was saved. And then he read the Bible, believed what the Bible said. My grandpa says, you don't believe what man tells you, believe what the Bible tells you. And my uncle read that Bible and says, this seems different from what the church believes. And he ends up finding right division. He shares it with me and I learn right division. All of that stemmed from my grandfather having a physical ailment that the doctors couldn't fix. What if the doctors could fix it? What if they could give him a pill and his stroke would be eliminated? My uncle probably wouldn't have been saved. I never would have learned right division. Maybe I would, I mean, who knows? I don't know what would have happened. I probably would have learned right division later on. I don't know. But the point is, yeah, I didn't like my grandpa's suffering. He didn't like having a stroke. He was the one that started all these charity walks. It was his idea, and he was the first one to do it back in 1949. And all these 5Ks and things for charities, he's the one that started all of that. Now he has a stroke and he can't walk. He entered depression. He was very depressed over the thing that he started, his livelihood, so to speak, and he can't do it. So he didn't enjoy that. But right now he's up in heaven. He doesn't have to worry about having that stroke. And now he's going to spend all eternity with his son, thanks to the stroke. So is he glad that he had the stroke? Absolutely. Absolutely. So should we be glorying in our infirmities, as Paul says? Or should we run to the doctor and take a pill? If we didn't have doctors, if we didn't have that, and we just had to trust in the immune system, and if the immune system couldn't cover it, then that's it. Would we be better off? I believe we would. Physically speaking, yeah, we don't live as long. But people wouldn't be concentrating on the physical anymore. The opportunity for God to use your infirmities so that you will, um, Christ can be strong through you or so that you may believe the gospel is almost entirely eliminated when we have prescription drugs. Instead of thinking, oh, I'm human. I've got some debilitating disease or I got something that I can't shake and you start thinking of the spiritual, you think of what's eternal. Instead, you think, I got something, I'm going to the doctor, I'm getting a pill, and I'm getting over it. We condemn taking illegal drugs because they were mind-altering the things. 
Legal prescription drugs all, a lot of times are mind altering too. A lot of bad side effects, mental issues, physical issues, side effects with these drugs. Prozac had really bad side effects for hundreds of thousands of people. They say, well, it's due to an overdose. Okay, but still, should I be taking that? I've had cold hands. It's called Raynaud's disease, which is just a fancy word for cold hands. And I've had cold hands for, I don't know, 30 years almost. Doctor, I said, what can you do about it? He says, the treatments are worse than the side effects. You just deal with the cold hands. So that's what I do. Would that be a good answer for most everything? Probably. But then you suffer. That's okay. The power of Christ can rest upon me. I'm not telling you not to take drugs. I'm not telling you not to go to the doctor. I'm just saying that our attitude as Christians today is completely different than it was 100 years ago. And the spirit is not made strong. We don't grow. And we glory in the flesh instead. And a large part of that is because we turn to doctors as our God rather than the Bible as our authority. Thanks for watching.